Alright, time for another draftphysics.com video presentation. So we'll deal with some, whatever, generic comments, uh, generally on the opposing side, blah blah blah. Um, see if there's anything worth um, responding to as any kind of reasonable counter-argument. So, not likely. There is a, I don't think I viewed this video. It popped up later, so he must have had it unlisted and then decided to list it or whatever. It's out of order, chronology-wise, but whatever. So let's just see what it is. It's kind of a debunk it of some kind, I guess. Here's another cartoon about toilet paper. Fascinating. Hello, uh, this is just to assure you that I will be responding to this. In due course. <sighs> oh, and you should look forward to it. You, it will be good. You will enjoy it. There will be a free gift in it for everybody who's genuinely interested in science. All right, so he says he's genuinely interested in science. And again, he's got like, what, six hours of these whatever videos up. And five minutes of them. I mean, realistically, five minutes of them are the necessary... Uh, elements to making a physics argument about an experiment. The rest of it is just him superfluously and gratuitously taking every single vocal opportunity to just m make up crap. And, you know, just to cast aspersions for which I have to defend myself against. To lie and force me to say he's a liar. Ugh. So he says this is an old video. And the free gift thing mentioned in it, I can't for the life of me remember what it was going to be. <laughs> See? So he makes these videos in the past, and then he throws them up, literally, um, and says, um, a raisin, perhaps. Because raisins are diamag diamagnetic. So we're back to this stupid argument. So he, he keys on these little things and thinks they're so, so important, and they have really no significance at all typos and such just in science they won't give up they won't care one way or the other well, let's see what he's doing here else, you'll get something out of it so worth worth waiting for won't be long yeah so <laughs> haven't we heard all that crap before so what what is all this see i mean you know he throws in these little cartoons and you're saying what, what is this crap So, so this he's doing for the love of science. He's doing this crap for the love of science. All right. And his ballpoint quill. So this is, he's got a wig on doing this, whatever this is. I don't know. <laughs> Look around you. A modern tape recorder. Okay, and so these, these, you know, then more references to he doesn't believe in graceful exits for anything, people or animals, I guess. He thinks they should be forced to die as miserably as possible. He's a big fan of imposing suffering. So he's got to throw his politics in here, his, his, Pro torture politics. They have no size. No, 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 no. The photons are really huge. No, 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 no. Okay, he's doing this for the love of science. Quote mining oh, gratuitously. So, again, let's understand I've made three videos covering energy, gravity, and photons. Tried to make them as brief as possible, 15 minutes or less. Well, it's really um, 17 minutes or less, but whatever. Um, he can't respond to any of those explicit, subject-oriented, this-is-my-argument arguments. Instead, he has to go, quote, mine 10 years of videos, thousands of videos now, to find things I didn't say very well or, um, you know, as clearly as I would have liked, and use them to create a straw man argument to defeat. And he's doing that for the love of science. 
tiny little ball. No, 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 no. They have no size. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm just not gonna, not gonna waste my. Oh, he's just does it forever, right, or something. You know, and throws in gratuitous other dopey pictures because he loves science. This is for the love of science little no size photons are really huge tiny they have no size they're really oh yeah clearly i have explained the photon itself is very large because the photon is a collection of the little tiny quanta and apparently this argument is just too complicated <laughs> there's beans in the jar of beans we're calling the jar of beans a photon well the photon is really the beans, isn't it? Uh, huge. Electron is huge. Electron uh, is a tiny thing. And this is... Uh, say, I mean, obviously, depending on what you're making relative comparisons to, compared to an elephant, electron is tiny. Compared to a photon, the element of a photon, the pieces that make up a photon, an electron is gigantic. Too complicated for you? Can't follow along? why we go to school using the feather quill provided right down in your pocketbook photons are huge <laughs> pocketbook <Yeah. laughs> I don't think I've ever said the word on purpose about anything I'm trying to describe yeah. queer delve deeper and think about what it meant and let's be honest he hasn't got a clue what it means that won't stop him guessing. Yeah. Jumping. I was really pleased that... Feynman basically points out that that's what science is. Science is guessing as an answer and then testing the answers you guessed at. That's, that's what the process actually is. It's using your imagination to say, what are the possible ways this could happen? And then you find out which one of the possible ways you have imagined fit best. And then you see if it fits completely or incompletely. And the mistake I've pointed out that physics made after Newton was that there was really no testing. People got away with just being heroes. And they didn't really have to be tested heroes. So answers were the same way. Answers just became complete truth without really any testing. Eddington did an experiment that was completely marginal. Couldn't really be taken too seriously. And yet it made Einstein right about everything. Kind of silly. Did that please you, that that fascinated you, and that you wanted to delve deeper and think about what it meant? And let's be honest, he hasn't got a clue what it means. All right, let's go back, find out what the fuck he's talking about. The fact that it's turning on and off as he moves at a distance. I was really pleased that that pleased you, that that fascinated you, and that you wanted to delve deeper and think about what it meant. Uh, okay, so so he's saying I don't understand why the interference pattern is exactly the experiment I talked about doing. You know, where you can just prove this whole wave interference thing nonsense with the radar experiment because you can detect from both sides. So you put your receiver in the middle and you put the two radar guns on either side and you'll just be able to move the receiver and go in phase, out of phase, in phase, out of phase, in phase, out of phase and you can sit there and get the same interference pattern by just moving the receiver in between the two sources. And so how could it be wave interference? How could the signal from this speaker and the signal from this speaker interfere in space? Does it make any sense? No sense at all, really. How could they interfere with each other? They're traveling. They they'd never see each other. They never meet. They never touch. Okay, so they can't really be doing that. So it does make it kind of clear the jamming argument is, you know, that's a that's a plus for the jamming theory being the more complete theory. And so this arrogant twat holds his little glasses and tries to pretend he knows better. When he hasn't made the argument, he won't take on the video I made on the subject, the photon video. He'll just do this twatty crap. Be honest, he hasn't got a clue what it means. But that won't stop him guessing, jumping to conclusions. And won't stop you from contriving shitty experiments to try to prove your point 
Just like all the other charlatans. It made me think, I wish you could just give you the equipment so that you could play with it yourself and have fun with it and, and discover these things for yourself. Or that I could just... So, uh, yes, yeah, so like, why should it ever be done that way? Again, if somebody else has the equipment, why don't they just do this? It's The, the experiments are what? You can, you might have to use an hour of your time to set up these different experiments. It's not that much work. So why are we pretending we should be asking me to do it or anyone else who doesn't have the facilities to do it? I mean, I've said point. I don't have the space plainly, and uh, yeah, I don't have the hardware, and I don't have a machine shop, and I don't have any of those things. So why should I be doing these stupid experiments? Why shouldn't it be done by technicians who have the equipment to do the do it right? In a nice, clean, sterile environment. Uh, you know, and all that stuff. You're basically just saying, why don't we all do home surgery? You know, why don't we all just learn how uh, to do it not so good? Not so professionally. Let's all just be hacks. Why? Why do we have to do it that way? Why can't we do it the rational way? For the love of science at least share the hundreds of experiments that I've got in fast can't jump to conclusions so he's got hundreds of experiments and but he can't show just an experiment he has to do all this crap he has to take every experiment and taint it with a bunch of crap placed on top of it why is he burying his experiment under this crap so he clearly thinks the crap is more important than the experiment anyway so that brings up Stephen He's sort of a conclusion jumper. Wow! Wow, where did that come from? Why are you slandering me with an accusation that finds more to you? Because it seems clearly obvious that the only thing that motivates you is if I say it, you have to prove it's wrong. And that's it. And so all your conclusions are, Gary's wrong and I have to prove it. I have to defeat him. I have to stop him. I have to stop him. I have to stop him. That's all you're thinking about. There is nothing. You have no other agenda. You have no physics theory. You have no understanding of any element of how the universe works at all that is in any way your own or you understand it. You have been told things and then you just sit there and jump on them. You were told, it's 1.4, it's 1.4, and that's anti-Gary. And that's all you cared about. You didn't care about what's the logic of the 1.4, why would 1.4 be the, the magic number. You didn't care about any of the physics. You just cared that this was an agenda you could cling on to for the purpose of developing some sort of proof. And again, that's exactly what you did. I'm, I now sort of have very little doubt that you did the experiment in different ways and you just showed the one that came out the way you wanted it to. You and me. You're the one who goes around jumping to conclusions, then having to backtrack six months later in May, thumping the desk, dropping your chalk on the desk, saying, game over, game over. <laughs> then six months later, I was wrong, I was wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, that's why the channel's called Draft Physics. So I explain this to you again, that ten years ago, all I had was a, a little bit of a gravity theory. And that's all it was. Okay, so... You know, it's a work in progress. I will, no doubt, uh, draw some wrong conclusions. Again, I was using the Frisbee analogy for polarization, and it really isn't a very good analogy, because it isn't how it works. So what does that mean? That means the whole theory is wrong? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that the truth is a little different. And it's the same outcome, same basic um, argument can be made, but it's for a different reason. And all of these phenomena are a little subtle and complicated like that. Compton scattering all these different things. You think what? You, there's, no, there's no possibility of uh, advancing your understanding? Again, I can make the argument about tired light. And the idea that photons do actually hit stuff as they travel billions and billions of light years. They actually travel through some transparent molecules. They hit some hydrogen atoms. And the, those hits of those hydrogen atoms actually do scatter the light. But it's a tiny amount of scattering. But that tiny scattering added up over time ends up creating the frequency degrade. It's perfectly within the, the theory. It's exactly what Compton scattering predicts. You don't think that could possibly be an insight? 
it's not possible that that explanation might explain why there's redshift. It's not possible in your opinion because you have some special knowledge that tells you it's not possible. You, <laughs> you jump to conclusions, not me. I've not told anybody about my theory. That's exactly. So, exactly. You're the one playing some deceptive game, some dishonest bullshit game that you're playing. You have an agenda, and you're not saying to everybody honestly what that agenda is. So what part of that is for the love of science? I will be, I'd be secretive and I will not expose my, you know, my real plan, my, my uh, incentives, my biases. So you're the cheater here, clearly. Uh, let's move on from whatever this is, the, the sermon. <sighs> There's three, if, if, the, if the wavelength has a, a three centimeter distance at the speed of light, then the antenna that will be optimal will also be three centimeters. But there's no argument there that I think that... There's no argument there. I'm afraid there is. There is an argument there, Franklin. Um, see, I like Franklin. He's not rude. He's not impolite. So, in being wrong, you, you don't want to sort of make too big a deal of it. But Gary, on the other hand, both Gary and Franklin are absolutely wrong here. Bearing in mind that Gary... Has... Okay, so he's making a statement. Okay, now let's see if he has any evidence to back it up. ...has been pontificating about this for year after year after year. And at this point in time, he still does not realize, still does not realize that the length of, the, of an ideal antenna is not the same as the wavelength. Franklin is going along with it, but I don't think he's thought it through. The crazy thing is, look, folks, I mean, you, all you folks who know nothing about physics and are just, it just... The so he's really not showing us the evidence. He's just talking shit. In at this out of curiosity. Don't you think, though, that someone like Gary, who's been studying this for 10 years, I think, or whatever... Well, well I really haven't just been studying radio transmission, okay? Now, clearly, you can modify antennas. You know, you, you can, you can create them in parallel. You can do lots of things to antennas to maximize your capacity to receive signal. Okay, but the basic idea that the spread, the polarization, is antenna polarization. And that's what's exactly happening inside the atoms. Now, you're gonna, not going to argue this in any way. The point is, is that what is the most obvious feature that creates light is electricity. And what's the feature of electricity is it travels a certain speed through a material. And the speed is essentially telling you, okay, the frequency. How, how high, how, how much the polarization is going to be is going to be dictated by how fast, how far you can go at the speed of light. The speed of the force pushing electrons at a very high speed, let's say. And so the antenna polarization is going to be very close to that distance. Now, maybe it's going to be a little less, maybe a little more, but it's within the range of, yeah, it's something like that. Now, what's your theoretical argument to how photons are made? You think that someone like Gary, who's been studying this for 10 years, has been pontificating about it, preaching to the world that they're all idiots. Don't yeah, they? right. I, I, oh, I said in my videos, I'm an expert on radio transmission. No. I'm just gleaning the information from what the experiments indicate. And there's every, like I can just show you the MIT guys have a certain size antenna and then they go out and do a polarization experiment. And what are they using to collect the information? Well, an antenna that's roughly the same size. I don't know how antennas work properly. don't know how magnetism works. And he, he only realizes two weeks after this, because he finally gets around to Wikipedia and he's like, oh, I was wrong. Why didn't he know this? Um, wrong about what? See, there, I, like I said, you can modify antennas, and then they say, you know, you can do a certain calculation for um, a, a dipole antenna. And a dipole antenna is half the size. But that's because it's a dipole. That's because, you know, technically it's just putting two longer antennas together in a different configuration. But it's... A different configuration. It doesn't tell you the polarization of the actual energy. Already, 
why didn't Franklin come to that? I don't want to be nasty to Franklin. Cause... Well, you're being just a douchebag here. I mean, you know, to either of our theories, mine or Franklin's, it doesn't matter whether the polarization is twice the wavelength or half the wavelength. Because it's almost insignificant compared to the actual size of an electron. You know, whether it's uh, a hippopotamus or an elephant that's sitting on your fucking head, it's really not going to make a much difference to how crushed you are, if you get my drift. It's not a really a relevant thing to find the exact absolute number. It's just to understand the number is many atoms. It's not anywhere near the polarization of light isn't anywhere near the size of an electron. Not even close. Not even within a million close. Franklin is, a de Franklin is not a, a nasty character. He, he doesn't want to blow up the world. <laughs> it says, so more bullshit. I want to blow up the world. No, I want to end suffering. Okay, pointless, stupid suffering. You think it's okay to impose torture on something. You think it's okay to say, you want to live my life. You want to live. You want to be one of us. You want to be part of our little Borg. I'm saying you don't have a right to do that. I think that's obnoxious. It's so fucking arrogant. You're going to tell somebody else what their philosophy should be. They should believe like you that there's some great mission you're on. You're not on any mission, asshole. Your whole life has been a, a, a fucking theater of tragic clownery all right you, you, you're a, you know you, there's not going to be any wow uh, let's sing it uh, my way at your funeral no it's going to be what a tragic waste la 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 tragic waste la 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 but fuck you you know i mean fuck you i, I you know this is just such a silly way to describe a philosophy you want to just put it in black and white terms. I'm either you have to be either completely pro-life or completely pro-death. No, those aren't the two choices, idiot. You know, one of the other options is you realize we're just programmed douchebags. You can be programmed to be a Nazi, or you can be programmed to be a little English douchebag, or you can be programmed to be all kinds of stupid things. All right, and it's all quite arbitrary on planet Earth right now. And anyone who's not a little bit cynical about the point of all that horse shit, you know, some breeding war, you know, <laughs> let's see who can take over the planet. What a pile of shit this is. So, you know, fuck you. Doesn't go around talking about fucking women downstairs or, or can I... Yeah, the subject was, should contracts mean anything? Especially contracts about, say, say we were going to decide to be a criminal of some kind and you had a partner and you told the partner, well, you can't rape any girls, okay? We're going to be criminals, but no raping. And then he does everything to indicate he's just about ready to rape one of the victims. What do you do? Say, thanks? Good deal? Or do you say, fuck this, okay? I'm not going to be part of this. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. And you do the right thing. Yeah, end your partnership. In cats or killing people, and you know, just because they're poor. But at any rate, they're just both... because they're poor, just because they're poor. No, that's not the truth. If they were poor and minded their own business and were humble about their poverty and recognized, geez, I'm not very productive. I'm not very good at anything. That's why I'm poor. Uh, you know, shit. I better mind my own business, huh? But then they decide to have ten kids. Yeah, they're assholes, idiot. If you don't understand how they're assholes, irresponsible fucking assholes, there's bird, you know, if a bird was, if there was a real bird in the world, you know, worse than the cuckoo, <laughs> you know, but anyway, one that actually just went out and laid eggs in absolute shit, found a pile of shit and laid the egg in, in the shit, and then a little bird had to hatch in the shit. What, what you'd say, what a great bird that is, it's such cool, let's make it our national bird. That's what you would do. You'd make a flag with that bird on it, you know, and wave it because that's just so fucking brilliant to you. Irresponsible things. Great. Let's have more of that. Let's praise the irresponsible. Fuck you. See, this, this shit doesn't belong in these videos. This is just such a pile of crap. I mean, you can't figure out what channel you're responding to, fucking idiot. Ugh. Wrong. And here we have two people 
being quite intellectual about discussing something that they know absolutely nothing whatsoever. Okay, so this is also just horseshit. We don't know absolutely nothing. And I would argue, why haven't you responded to my photon video then? If, if you think there's uh, we don't know anything, why can't you respond to the video and actually point out how there's something in it that can't possibly be the truth? Why don't you do that, douchebag? About Franklin has just uh, enlightened us with the observation that in an LNB, there's two tiny little antennas, very short antennas at, at right angles to one another. Now, yeah, right, now, so it's a dipolar antenna, right? So the rules change when you do those kind of things. But that definitely doesn't prove that the polarization is less. It just proves, again, that if you have to go back to what's the elemental function, what's actually being transmitted through the space and why you're receiving it uh, with that kind of antenna. You don't have any theory you've pre pre presented. What's your theory? There's a, uh, an electric field somewhere going this way, and there's a magnetic field doing this at, at 4 million times the size. It's doing this. In as much space, in four billion times the space that an electron exists in, and somehow one electron senses that gigantic event and wiggles. Is that your theory? Well, it sucks. If that's your theory, it sucks. Fucking idiot. Some of you out there, if you don't know what this is on about, you shouldn't be watching Gary's videos because if you don't know what we're talking about, if you don't know what an LN... Oh, uh, yeah, and what contribution have you made to clarifying any of that except making noise, making propositions that you... I've proven. I've done the... I, bah, 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 bah. So what, what have you accomplished? You created um, experiments that are overtly deceptive in the sense that you didn't account for features that are important like in your little pawn, you know, the little chess piece gets shot up in the air experiment, not recognizing that, oh, that only works if the pieces are, are heavier than the things you're colliding with the, the, the stressing mechanism. So if I don't make them heavy enough, I've defeated the purpose of the experiment. Um, you know, and then using gravity to push things and not recognizing that gravity can only move at 9.8 meters per second. It can't make things go faster. I mean, you know, you're the one who has failed to be, uh, um, to, to, to be careful. You're the one making sloppy propositions, fuckhead. If you don't know why we have these two tiny little antennas or what we're talking about in an LNB, it's the part that collects the information from your satellite dish and down converts it. It's a low noise block, it amplifies it and down converts it to a frequency that can travel down a coaxial cable without too much loss. You don't want to be installing waveguide down the outside of your house, do you? You probably don't know what I'm on about that, do you? Right, so just more blah, 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 blah. Then why are they international antennas, you know, when they want to collect, I guess, you know, like I said, one of these uh, very uh, sh sh short, wave, no, long wavelength. You know, they set up a whole array of antennas to really create one big, giant, long antenna. Why do they bother doing all that crap if the polarization, the, the antenna polarization isn't rather huge? But anyway, enough of this. See if he's on any other subject. I came in just because you don't like me. I have to take it on the chin. No. More fun. Uh, this is, again, more for the love of science. Not provided. I, I don't know. He's making some kind of crack about Newton. Why would you even do that? So again, you still haven't demonstrated how Newton's mechanics is incorrect. You haven't given us any example where it doesn't work. Look around you. Hello, uh, this is just to assure you that I will be responding to this in due course. Oh, whatever. So he doesn't know what he was responding to, and he doesn't know what the secret fun thing he was going to do is. And so anyway, so he takes he makes a video, whatever, months ago, and then decides to post it on random, I'm posting my moronic troll video day. Ugh. All right. So let's go to the comments. We'll take these in chronological. Well, we can't really because these videos aren't in the right order. But let's, let's do this one first. Let's see what kind of comments are on it. Yeah, this 
I mean, it really shouldn't. It really isn't much point, right? It's just going to be dominated by anonymous troll comments, accounts that have no, there's no person involved, really. All right, to Steve Godfrey regarding gays. <laughs> Gary's latest dishonest statement. He's hilarious and fundamentally dishonest. Okay, so there was something dishonest somewhere. Oh, excuse me. Where was that? I wonder if he will cite it. It was me who pointed out this particular lever bends, not Gary. He's just repeating what I said at 535. Now, obviously, I didn't hear what you said at 535. Anybody watching the video can see I wasn't paying at all any attention to what you were saying. I don't even know if I played that piece of the video because I just jumped through the video. And so clearly I was just pointing out no real point in showing clips of bad levers. <laughs> yeah, if they bend, it's not a good thing. That's what I said. That's the extent of it. I never did a whole video on that kind of that comment. So this is his obsession. You see how he's so crazy? I did something fundamentally dishonest because I merely noticed in watching the lever that it bent. And then I know when a lever bends, that's not a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing if you want to make the lever into a spring besides being a lever, but it's not a good thing if you're going to do explicit tests for uh, two speeds. If you want double the speed at the end of the lever and halfway down the lever, you want half the speed. You're not going to get that if you're bending the lever. That's it. That's all there was. All right. Uh, unlike Gary, I was being honest. This has nothing to do with, uh, again, any... You can't make a rational claim against my honesty. You can't play the video and show how I had pre-knowledge that you had already conceded you weren't doing a very good experiment. And you were just being kind of lazy and sloppy. Uh, to make some sort of point. And as I pointed out, the point doesn't mean too much in the context of your previous experiments. All right, anyway. He's cold reading his audience. Uh, what, what, <laughs> yeah, so, what's wrong with doing that? I, I find your content insufferably disgusting. It's so fucking, and it's an insult to humanity. You're a disgraceful human being. You make disgraceful crap. It's disgusting. It's like, why would I look at a bunch of poo pictures or something? I have no interest in your anal physics. None. Okay? So, why would I watch it first and then commentate? Because that means I have to watch even more of it. I have to endure more of it. Fuck that. I mean, generally speaking, I do the cold thing when I know it's going to be a stinking pile of shit that isn't worth my time. And you have verified through your presentation that you really don't love science. You love being a clown. That's the song you should play. Be a clown, be a clown. That's what they should play. That's your anthem. You're a clown. Uh, <clears throat> a trick that fake physics use to fool their audience when are highly perceptive. So, <laughs> so, so he thinks there was something in there about fooling somebody or a trick. What's the trick? The lever bent. I reckon I saw it. Big deal. Okay. When in reality they are just um, feeding back information already disclosed. So, so he's just gonna go on and on and on about it. So let's see if there's anything. Uh, that's how merchants like Gary get away with it. So again, just more, more shit. You know, I, I, my videos are public. They're clearly what you see is what you get. I've been doing it for 15, over 15 years. I mean, this, this accusation that there's something at all ingenuine or in any way a manipulation is just so insipidly silly. Oh, Christ. I've been more open and honest than any creature on the internet. I mean, this is just such a pile of crap as an accusation. It's so incomprehensibly silly. All right, I had already disclosed. I <laughs> keep, keep saying it. So what? Where is there any evidence that I listened to your disclosure? You, you probably, I mean, if we actually play the clip, he's probably playing music over his disclosure and then talking his whatever, I don't know exactly what language he speaks. Uh, anyway, I thought even Gary can appreciate this is just an illustration of a general principle. 
Obviously, I couldn't appreciate any of that because all I was looking for is what you were supposed to be providing, which was experimental evidence. And 90% of your video isn't doing that. 90% of your video is this useless, ragged commentary where you just do this, where you just lie, lie, and lie some more. Why, why, would, why do you think I have any obligation to listen to your lies in the first place or even respond to your lies, you fuckface? Who the fuck do you think you are? Oh, amazing asshole. Uh, but in my enthusiasm to prove that it doesn't matter how heavy the objects are, and I never made any... So he wants to prove it doesn't matter how heavy the objects are when I never disagreed with the function of a lever. So he has no evidence that I ever said levers don't work. Ever. All I said was, is there are a couple of things you have to be recognized that you know I didn't recognize was angular momentum. That is, if you're going to cause things to roll, then it's going to matter. You know, uh, rolling is a specific event that it has to have specific circumstances, and clearly it has to be low velocity and it has to be different things, or the object won't roll; it'll skid. And then you change the friction of the objects. And I also pointed out that when the lever is pushing, it's not pushing in just one direction. It's also sliding on the lever itself. So you have to have stops to prevent the object from sliding in the wrong direction, gaining momentum in the wrong direction. All right, well, anyway, um, I failed to halt proceedings while I uh, scored my house for steel bars instead of polyester ones. I scoured my house. I, I, again, whose fault is this? It's your presentation. You don't want you 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 want to sit there and say it's okay that you're doing it kind of sloppy. Well, no, it's not really okay. You think it's okay? I don't think it's okay. Okay, to answer your question, finally, yes, there's every reason to suppose the flexing would work in Gary's favor, exactly as you described. But in reality, it doesn't matter anyhow because it's only to illustrate a point. So he's saying making the outside object, the faster object, go faster would be in my favor. Hmm. Interesting. When obviously it wouldn't be. Um, I'm saying that the two objects, the light one on the inside, I mean the light one on the outside track and the heavy one on the inside track have the same momentum. How would it be to my advantage if you gave more energy to the one on the outside? Oh, it certainly wouldn't. But anyway. Gary is a crafty little weasel. Whatever. He doesn't fool me anymore. Yeah, you've been saying that for four years. Okay, I was obviously fooled by you. You are the one who was obviously just intended to be a backstabbing piece of fucking shit from the very start. Your intention was to prove whatever your religion is that you won't disclose. Your actual beliefs. Your hidden agenda. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Oh, Godfrey. Yeah. Cheers. Such a pile of shit. So, so he's got my real name in here again. Okay, so he thinks he owns my real name. I mean, this, this piece of shit thinks he actually has it's his property that he can play with. Now, I've explained that the only thing that's really changed, okay, my address changed, I moved, I'm in a new location, and other people live in the house. I live in a different place. I don't have the same liberty as I used to have because I don't have neighbor. you know, I didn't have neighbors I had to worry about. I didn't have a lot of things where people, trolls, could cause trouble. But I do now. And so those things matter now. And the only thing he's doing is threatening those people to try to threaten me. That's the only thing he's accomplishing. I don't give a fuck. Okay? But the people who have to live here also give a fuck. And so you're just distressing them and hoping that'll cause problems for me. If this isn't the most disgusting tactic, you can't argue the argument. You have to attack people related to me. To get to me. And these are the same trolls, the fan that this guy is a big buddy with, you know, the Farley guy, who used my sisters and my dead parents as weapons. And you people keep saying, it's okay, I'll let this guy comment. I'll let this guy do this crap. I'll let him dox him in my comment section. What do I care? 
It's not my house. It's not my reality. I mean, Stephen, <laughs> I'll give you a clue. I mean, you know, if you were saying something anti the popular, you know, you would be vulnerable to what I get. Okay. <laughs> and they're real threats. You can pretend they're not real threats, but they happen in the world. I'm just telling you. There's crazy people in the world. And these people get motivated by all of your, your oh, we're, we're being attacked rhetoric. Like somebody's actually physically attacking you. Nobody's physically attacking you. No one's threatening you. No one's playing games with your relatives and this other bullshit. No one's calling the mayor of your town. That's what they've done to me, okay? They've done that as a method of attacking me. I've had the police at my house three times on false claims they gave to the police. Do you think this is a fair way to argue? I mean, you people are disgusting. All right. So, that's a good reason to end it. I, I mean, they can't, they can't argue the physics. And again, this tactic is so low. I'll release your private videos. I'll steal your content and republish it and force you to file, you know, go through the, the, the bullshit YouTube copyright protection mechanism, which really doesn't exist. You know, the big players don't have to file a lawsuit. If you're a little player, somebody steals your shit, you have to file a lawsuit. It's just such bullshit. Or you have to just basically lie and say you will to even initiate the process. And they'll take advantage of this crap. I mean, it really is disgusting. Yeah, really, it's really disgusting. I mean, you people have no ethics. And, and that's the truth of it. These are all nihilists, by the way. The Godfrey's and the, the Farley's and the rest of them, they all buy into that weird crap. Uh, well, without an ought, there is no is. Uh, well, no, with, if, if there's an is, there's no ought. You know, so, some kind of crap that somehow you can't recognize something to exist in the world through your personal experience of being conscious. You could say something like, well, consciousness makes you vulnerable. So that's an is. What's vulnerable mean? More well, vulnerable means you could be tortured. Well, that's serious, right? I, I'm pretty damn sure torture is serious. So that's an is. Torture is serious. It's not just nothing. It's not just, oh, it didn't happen. No, it's a real thing. I know I don't want it to happen. So that's an is. I don't want it to happen. What do you do about things you don't want to happen? Well, you to prevent them. Hey, if I'm preventing something, aren't I doing something kind of oddy? Oh, yeah, that seems like an ought, doesn't it? Yeah, I ought to stop it from happening because it's a bad thing. Gee, so it is bad. I ought to stop it. Seems to me that's an is turned into an ought in a perfectly rational way. But these idiots can't even do that unless it's happening to them. <laughs> then they can do it. They say, well, if I'm subjectively afraid, that means it's a fact. But if you logically understand, then it's not a fact. I mean, too fucking silly. But it gives them an advantage to be solipsistic, evil, maniacal, awful humans. Because everything, the only thing that matters to them is what's in it for me. They're Nietzsche retards. <clears throat> they don't think it matters what happens to all the other sentience, all the other things that feel. You can go ahead and torture them because to them, I didn't feel it. What does it have to do with me and my welfare? <laughs> Nothing. So therefore, it can't be a problem. It's that disgusting. All right. Anyway. Oh, it's just, oh, I just hate this planet. Oh, it's just so dirty. Oh. Oof. Filthy. Just disgusting. So anyway, until the next, <laughs> till the next time, it's just there just needs to be some science in your argument somewhere. Somebody please argue science, argue experimental evidence, show experiments, and argue for theory. Can somebody else do that on the internet? Is it possible? Uh, apparently not. Anyway, till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. This has been a draft physics video presentation.